Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-G-R-P. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Serpros. In this video, we're going to be talking about EIGRP. Okay, so EIGRP, or Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, is a Cisco protocol, or at least it was. Cisco created this protocol, but has since released it as an open standard. That being said, it is nowhere near as established or supported as OSPF by third-party vendors. EIGRP is an interior gateway protocol, meaning it's designed to be used within a single autonomous system. It is an advanced distance vector protocol. It works slightly differently from other distance vector protocols such as RIP, and it also includes some link state-like features as well. As with all routing protocols, the goal of EIGRP is to learn the best route to any given subnet within the network. If you've already seen the OSPF videos, you will know that OSPF does this by building a map of the entire network and then choosing the best routes from that map. Now that's all well and good, but is it really necessary? Well, EIGRP doesn't think so. EIGRP sends updates from one router to the next almost like a game of Chinese whispers, which apparently other countries call the telephone game. From the perspective of each router, only their neighbours exist, and frankly, they don't care about anything else. For example, router 1 wants to add the route to the subnet 10.0.0.0. Now, router 1 only sees his three neighbours and they all have routes to the 10.0.0.0 subnet. So they all send over their best routes along with the metric. Router 1 then runs some quick calculations to work out which route is best. In this case, Router 2 wins. Router 1 will then advertise this winning route to any downstream neighbours, and so on and so forth. So that's the general idea. But being the technical experts that we are, we want to know exactly how this works. EIGRP has a three step process. Becoming neighbors. Two routers running EIGRP on the same link form a neighbor relationship. Exchange routing information. The neighbors will then exchange topology information containing all the known routes and their metrics. Choose the best routes. Each router then chooses the best route to add to its routing table. We'll start with becoming neighbors. So here we have two routers. As with OSPF, ERGRP forms neighbor relationships with their connected routers. Thankfully, this process is a lot less involved than it is with OSPF. Once EIGRP is enabled on a router, it will start looking for potential neighbors using a hello message. Hello messages are also used to maintain neighbor relationships. They let the other routers know that they're still alive. Hello messages are sent every five seconds by default. There is also a hold timer similar to OSPF's dead time. The hold timer is how long a router should wait without hearing a hello message before it assumes that neighbor is dead. This is 15 seconds by default. These hello messages are sent to the multicast address of 224.0.0.10. When a router receives a hello message, it runs some checks to decide whether or not to become neighbors with that router. These checks are a lot less strict than they are with OSPF. They must have the same autonomous system number or AS number. This is set when configuring EIGRP on the router. They must be on the same subnet. EIGRP uses K values when calculating the metric. These values must match on both routers. But to be honest, they're not often changed. 
Finally, if you're using authentication, this of course needs to match as well. It's worth noting here that EIGRP doesn't require the hello and hold timers to match. If everything matches, then the routers will respond with a hello message of his own. And that's pretty much it. We now have two neighboring routers. The next step is to exchange routing information. An important note at this stage is ERGRP doesn't actually use UDP or TCP to send update type messages. Instead, it uses Reliable Transport Protocol, or RTP. This is used to reliably send these type of messages. The idea is RTP will use sequence numbers to identify if messages have been received by the neighbors. EIGRP uses the Diffusing Update Algorithm, also known as DUAL, to handle all root computations to ensure no routing loops occur. So let's break this down. Both routers will send full update messages, which contain all routing information known by that router. An ACK message is then sent to acknowledge the delivery. Once all routing information has been shared, from that point onwards, only partial updates will be sent if a change occurs in the network. If there are no changes, then only the friendly hello message will be sent back and forth. Hello, 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 hello. Forever and ever. But let's say a link does go down and there are no backup routes, which we will talk about in a minute. The router will start something called route recomputation. This is where the router will try and find a loop free route to the lost subnet. First, the root will enter an active state. Now this is a funny one because you would think active means working, but no, active means the root is actively f If a link is working, it's in the passive state. Ah, working. So the link is down and there are no backup routes. In this case, the connecting router sends a query message to all of its neighbors, asking them if they have any routes to the lost subnet. The neighbors will reply with either a new route to the lost subnet, or to tell the router he's out of luck. If the neighbor doesn't have a route, that route is dead, and it should be removed from the routing tables. We now move on to our last step, choosing the best routes. So now we have exchanged our routing information, the routers need to calculate the best routes and add these to their routing table. Hopefully everything has been pretty straightforward up until now, but this is where things can start to get a little more complicated. Don't worry though, once you get your head around this, it all becomes very simple. First, we need to take a look at the metric calculation formula. Now, take a deep breath. 10 to the power of 7 divided by the lowest bandwidth in kilobits per second plus the delay. Delay is a value given to each outgoing link. This is measured in microseconds. Multiply all of that by 256. Whew. Okay. For example, in this network, router 1 is trying to calculate the metric to the 10.0.0.0 subnet. All links are fast Ethernet with 100,000 kilobits per second and 100 microseconds delay. Note that in this calculation, we use tens of microseconds. So the delay we will actually be using is 10 rather than 100. Cisco commands, however, will use microseconds. Yeah, I know, it's confusing. It is. So if we calculate this, it's 10 to the power of 7. So that equals 10 million. Divide by our lowest link bandwidth. 
which in this case is 100,000 kilobits per second, because, well, they're all 100,000 kilobits per second. If there was one, say, 10,000 kilobits per second, then we would use that instead. Plus all of our outbound delay. 10 plus 10 plus 10. All of this multiplied by 256 equals our metric of 33,280. <sighs> if you think that sounds complicated, you're right. It is very complicated. But guess what? That is the simple version. Yeah, it gets harder. I mentioned K values when we looked at the parameters that need to match when becoming neighbors. And this is what's being used here. Bandwidth, K1, and delay, K3, are all the default options when running this calculation. However, you can add load, K2, and reliability, K4, into the calculation. Luckily though, load and reliability are rarely used. It's also worth knowing that bandwidth and delay can be changed manually to influence the metric calculation. Now, why would you want to do that? Well. As you'll see in a minute, we can adjust the metric and force the traffic to go down the route we actually want it to. Okay, so now for some good news. While it's good to know how routers are actually calculating these metrics, it's unlikely that you will ever need to do this yourself. Even in the exam, I can't see them asking you this question. At least not this in depth anyway. And in the real world, if this ever does come up for some reason, then at least you can use a calculator. Let's move on. We've seen how the metric is calculated. So now we need to talk about reported distance or RD and feasible distance or FD. Reported distance is the metric from a neighboring router's perspective. Reported distance can sometimes be called advertised distance as well. Feasible distance is the reported distance plus the distance to the neighboring router who told you about the route in the first place. So imagine speaking to your next door neighbor and you say, hey man, do you know where Jeff lives? And your neighbor says, Jeff? Yeah, Jeff lives two doors down from me. That is your reported distance. Your neighbor has reported to you that Jeff lives two doors down from him. So now you're like, if Jeff lives two doors down from you, and I live next door to you, then Jeff lives three doors down from me. That is your feasible distance. It's the reported distance plus your distance on top. Hopefully that makes sense. Finally, we need to look at how routers choose the best route to add to their routing table. And for this, we need to know what a successor route is and what a feasible successor route is. A successor route is simply a route with the best metric and it will be added to the routing table. ERGRP can have multiple equal cost successor routes and it will load balance the traffic. It also supports unequal load balancing with a little bit of configuration. Now a feasible successor is a backup route if the successor route fails. Having a feasible successor as a backup allows EIGRP to converge quickly with barely any downtime at all. And this is a big advantage. Not all routes, however, can be feasible successors. The golden rule for a feasible successor is that the reported distance must be less than the successor's feasible distance. Why? This is put in place to stop any routing loops being formed. Now this doesn't mean a route won't be used if the reported distance is more than the successor's feasible distance. No, it just means the router will need to do some recalculation just to make sure that it won't cause any routing loops. Now, if you're not following this, don't worry. Let's take a quick look at an example and hopefully put this all together. Router 1 is trying to add the route to the 10.0.0.0 subnet. The neighbors will send their best route and the route metric. This is the feasible distance from the perspective of the neighboring router. 
Router 1 notes this metric down as the reported distance. Router 1 then runs its own calculation using the reported distance and also adding its own bandwidth and delay into the calculation. The result is Router 1's feasible distance. It will do this for all received routes and then choose a successor route and maybe a feasible successor route as well. If we open up Router 1 and type show IP root EIGRP and use the pipe command B for begin 10.0.0.0 so we only see this route. We can see the feasible distance in the routing table. You can see that we currently have three routes to the 10.0.0.0 subnet. These are all successor routes because EIGRP is load balancing the equal cost paths. To see a feasible successor, we will need to make the change and force one of the routes to be removed from the routing table. To do this, we will open router 2 and change the interface bandwidth. Enable, configure terminal, Interface, fast ethernet, 0 slash 1. And we will change the bandwidth from 100,000 kilobits per second to 99,000 kilobits per second by typing bandwidth 99,000. Now, if we go back to router 1 and run the same show IP root command, we can now see the route through router 2 has been removed. But the route hasn't been removed completely. If we run the command show IP EIGRP topology, this will show the EIGRP routing information. This will show us the successor as well as any feasible successor routes. We can also see the feasible distance on the left hand side and the reported distance on the right. We can see that we have two successor routes. And the feasible distance of the successor routes is 33,280. A successor route is a route or routes with the best metric. The bottom route has a metric of 33,536, which means this is not a successor route. However, it is a feasible successor. This means the route can be used as a backup if the successor was to fail without needing to perform a recomputation. That's it for EIGRP. There's lots more we could talk about, but I think that's enough for one video. There's a few new concepts here, but hopefully this is cleared up for you. EIGRP is a lot simpler than OSPF. However, OSPF is dominating the dynamic routing world. If you like this video, remember to like, comment and subscribe. The support from you guys is unreal and it really does keep these videos coming. Thank you for watching.